All right. Good morning, guys. This is a very last minute impromptu stream. Uh, welcome to 2026. If you guys hadn't seen my last video, still getting over a cold, so I may have to hit the uh, uh, mute button here. But the reason why I wanted to share what I was working on is I don't want to do a full video on this. It probably isn't of interest to most people. But in 2026, it seems like every tech company out there, every business is doubling down on being in the cloud, your data being stored in the cloud. And I think it's a disservice to what we want to do as uh, emergency operators and people that want to have our data. So about a year ago, I did a video that I'll share with you guys here in the chat, if you haven't seen it, where I looked at a technology from the very late 70s and uh, early 80s, or most of the 80s and early 90s was its heyday, and that was the bulletin board system. Great system for sharing information. And I'm running a full service bulletin board system uh, behind me over radio. It's been running now officially for about 13 months. And uh, I have brought up the HF link. Now, one of the pieces of information that I would love to have in the field, especially in our area, is information about wildfires. Okay. And uh, we've had a very heavy rainy season. And in fact, right now, the Tonto National Forest looks like uh, a tropical desert right now. So that's all going to dry up. We're probably going to have very heavy burns throughout the entire state. In fact, we had a pretty severe one when we first moved out here six years ago. But um, so I wanted to get that information online. And I was going through my, uh, let me show you my screen here. I was going through my bookmarks this morning. This is what prompted this rabbit hole at 2 a.m. when I got up. And one of them was this site called NCWeb that I will check regularly, usually in the summer during our heavy fire season. And it has a shot of the entire U.S. In fact, I'll share this with everybody here just so you can have it for your records. Uh, but it is connected to the Internet. Uh, you do have to... Uh, have service. So I want access to this information, right? And uh, I wanted to figure out a good way to do this. So what's interesting is that they do support what they call an RSS feed. And I'm able to get an RS, uh, RSS uh, news reader. And as content is published, as there are fire incidents throughout the US, uh, I will get those on a daily basis, again, over the internet. And for example, here's one for uh, Santa Fe. So I am a software engineer by trade, and I thought, hey, it would be great to have a bridge between the data that the U.S. government is publishing for InsaWeb and put it on my offline bulletin board system that is now accessible to everyone across the country or the world and also in the Phoenix area. So we're not going to get into the nerd details of what I'm doing here, but suffice to say, I wrote a little uh, piece of code here or script down here at the bottom. And what it'll do is with my internet connection at the house, it'll go and request that RSS feed from InsaWeb. And then it's going to find all the incidences, all of the fire incidences for today. And then it will log into my BBS and push it. So, and this is for the entire US. So if you're in Indiana, for example, you don't have access to the internet, you've been impacted by a fire, and you have the capability to use your radio, you could log in to get information about that now for my bulletin board. So uh, I know this is very specific, and not a lot of people are doing this, but I want to plant the seed that even today in 2026, we have the tools and capabilities to aggregate data from the internet store them for offline use and bridge that with radio. So I'm going to push this out there. We'll see if it doesn't explode. Yeah. So it logged in and it went ahead and uh, posted that stuff. Now here's the fun demo and this is going to be no smoke and mirrors here. This is my Dell 7220 connected to me or next to me. I'm using my uh, BTEC UV pro. So local packet, but I also, could connect over HF as most of you guys can. And we're going to connect to my bulletin board system right now directly over 
the radio so you can see what that post might look like. So we're connecting right now. This is real time. The transmission lights are kicking on and off. We get greeted with my bulletin board system. I've got a bunch of services here that also will bring back uh, space or space weather. Uh, you can do searches for Wikipedia, for example, uh, get sunspot numbers. I even have a few sites that allow you to read like the modern hams post. But today we're just going to log into my bulletin board system. And again, you could do this over HF radio, especially over that VAR HF link. And now that we're connected, I'm going to list the bulletins. And uh, it's going to list about 20. So this is real time going over VHF packet. And what you're seeing here right at the top, the first two uh, were kind of tests here. We'll wait for this thing to stop so that I can really talk about it. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, we're going to highlight this thing here. So that was the post that I posted. So there's a message ID or a bid called 1500, and I'm addressing it to everybody in the USA uh, because there's a cool feature that I've been working on for the last few days where I have peering relationships with other bulletin board systems over HF across the country. So there's a station in Nevada, for example, that will connect to me once a day, and he'll take all of the bulletins that I post, and he will pick those up, and then he will also distribute it to everybody else. So it's a distributed network. Uh, in fact, you can kind of see a good example here of stuff that I did not create on this bulletin board system, but I picked up from him. So there was some space weather information uh, published by N4SD, so I'm really trying to double down on this older tech, use my background to start to provide more data services. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So uh, to make things easy, I'm gonna change my page size to 40 real quick. And then we are going to read message ID 1500 here. I'm oh, sorry, not 1500, uh, 1121. And uh, if the guys from my local CERT uh, group are watching, this is going to be a, a game changer because one of the things that they cover uh, on the CERT. Uh, so here, here's coming in full in real time here. And you know, one of the things they cover in the briefings on Tuesdays and Thursdays are local events. So you can see here I requested bid number 1121. It was from... KT7 RUN me. It's going to the category fire. And the title is InsaWeb Daily Incidences. Uh, for right now, I just brought back everything for this month. And there's only one. And apparently, there is an incident as of the 8th of January in Santa Fe. And you get all of that information. And to get the next page, we'll go ahead and just press enter here. And you'll get various other bits of detail about um, where it's located. So we'll get the uh, coordinates here uh, in latitude and longitude and a few other bits here. So that's all I really wanted to share you was, or share with you was plant the seed of we can, even in 2026, bring back this older tech and bridge it with this idea of sharing real time, we'll call it tactical information. So uh, what actually spurred this was not so much me going through the bookmarks and seeing that InsaWeb uh, bookmark, uh, but when I established my peering relationship with uh, this other gentleman in Nevada, I was getting earthquake information from South America. I uh, really didn't want it, so I filtered it out. But I'm like, wow, that would be great. And I was getting space weather information. And I know there's multiple different ways of doing it, uh, but it's nice to have the option of multiple different tools um let's see uh yeah that's really all i wanted to share with you guys it, it wasn't meant to be a long video more than anything it's food for thought and if you are curious on how to access my bulletin board system to get this i'll put the details real quickly in here so you can connect to kt7 run dash seven and i have two methods to come into the bulletin board system if you're in the phoenix area 
the local frequency is 145.710, and that's on FM, and it's 1200 baud packet. And then my uh, my FT991A, which is running the HF link, the VAR link, that thing is not uh, stopping. I'm getting connections all day long. So to access that, you want to use VAR HF on 7.0635. Uh, 7.063.5 upper sideband, and that's with VAR HF. And you can use the VAR terminal or Qterm TCP if you're using MCOM tools. But um, yeah, that's that's just something that I didn't want to sit down and produce a full video for and just wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I'll take a couple of comments here. Let's see, the first one was from James Young. This is going to be another game changer. Yeah, I think so, James. James is in Tennessee, so in fact, James could connect. Uh, typically, 40 meters is a great time for Tennessee to make it into my bulletin board system. So once it's dark for both of us till about 5 a.m. local time for me, they could access that. Uh, they could see if there are any bulletins in, in their area uh, that may impact them and distribute that information with their networks. And then we got uh, Tom Tango, Oscar Mike, also great YouTuber. Check him out. Uh, hard to connect from Pennsylvania on 40 meters. Well, Tom, the cool thing about this is uh, you have other, other bulletin boards in your area that might be easier to connect to. In fact, they're all over the place. So with what I'm doing here and now also me setting up the forwarding and peering relationship, uh, the bulletins that I create here in Arizona will be distributed worldwide or across the U.S. and, and vice versa. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, guys, I'll drop as soon as I get the last comment here. So Goat Locker Gaming says, just wanted to jump in and say thank you at the Tech Prepper for dropping knowledge. Yeah, you're very welcome, my friend. Uh, it's a, I'm having a blast, and I'm still in a position where I can do it. Oh, on that note, shameless plug, guys. I do have inventory now that just came in uh, day before yesterday for those $20 7 by 7 uh, pouches. I'm actually headed to the um, uh, USPS to mail those. And I still do have a, a quantity of uh, the TTP land nav kits. I'm not going to make any more uh, just because I'm sitting on inventory. I did drop the price to 130 on those and $10 fixed rate shipping. So shameless plug out. And then Key says, <coughs> excuse me. All right. He says, I'm assuming it requires two different systems, one for the two meter and one for HF. Yeah, so Keith, I'm actually running a uh, bulletin board on one computer that is directly connect connected to my two meter uh, radio. I'm running the Yesu FT 2980R. But then I've also configured what they call a, a port for HF communication. And I have a second machine that's connected to the FT 9911A. And all it's doing is running the VARA HF application, listening for inbound connections. And on that note, guys, I'm only supporting inbound connections for people that have VARA licenses. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, version of VARA that doesn't have a license it, uh, comes in too slowly and it ties up the connection for too long. So I just made that change uh, recently. But yeah, Keith, you can come in uh, either packet or or HF, it doesn't matter. If you're local, I recommend packet. It's a whole lot um, faster and more robust. Uh, Killer Mini RC, ooh, that's a cool name. Good info as always, thanks from KE2ANN. And then the Moto Ham, thanks guest down, can't wait to get my general so I can do more of this. Yep, and if you're local and have a tech, you could still get in, but if you're a general, you can get in uh, worldwide to what I was just showing here. Uh, that was my shameless plug. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And I think this is the last comment here. Oh, we got one more. Uh, let's see. Gorilla Radio. Thanks for all the great content, brother. Learning along the way. Yeah, sounds good. This is going to be a fantastic year. Um, I'm really going to be focused this year on doubling down on taking all the tools that uh, I put together and really focusing now more on the communications aspect. So stuff like this is like, now that I got over the nerd pieces of how to connect the radio to the bulletin board, how to do WinLink, how to do JSA, 
I want to focus more on practical communication using those tools. Um, and then I start, I want to start educating people on that. So I'm doing some minimal consulting services on an hour by hour basis. I'm working on a field manual. That's going to be pretty cool as well as a uh, future field training company later this year. And most of the videos I'm going to be doing are going to be geared around that. In fact, I picked up like a $50 pair of dumb uh, camera bridge glasses last night that are arriving today. And there's they're not connected to a computer. And I want to start doing some uh, POV uh, videos where you can kind of see what it's like from my first-person experience doing the things I do. And I've always had a hard time kind of sharing everybody uh, when I'm doing something because I never have a cameraman with me or very rarely. And I, I think it might be cool for you guys to go out and like I'll do, we'll do a, uh, an Envis antenna deployment, but you're going to see it through my lens. You'll see the knots I'm doing. You'll see how I'm assessing the terrain. Uh, so it should be fun. So that's coming as well. And then we got a couple here from, uh, from Tom. Is there a list of BBS nodes that are out there? Yeah, there's a map that's out there. Uh, I forget how to find it right now. If you type in BPQ, Bravo, Papa, Quebec, and map, and I'm going to try to do that search real quick, actually. Let me give me a second here. BPQ map nodes. I think I, think I found it. Yes, sir. I got it for you. Great, great, great suggestion. I'm going to drop that in the chat here. In fact, I'm wondering if my note is there. Uh, let me go ahead and pop that on the screen. That, that is actually a really cool idea here. This is my full-time job now, guys. Uh, I know the pr video production quality. I'm not planning on doing much with it these days. But here's the, um, the, the map that... Uh, Tom was asking about if it exists. And let me see if I can make this larger for you. Yeah, so you can go in and it looks like you can... Uh, I don't know why my node is not listed here. Uh, I should be beaconing, but there's a node out here in Arizona. But you can see how many nodes uh, they're out there. And uh, I'm actually kind of curious to see if this is my new peering buddy. Yeah, now I'm wondering if that's actually the uh, the node list here. So, quick Google search, and then looks like Tom. Tom said, "Have a great day." All right, and then uh, Shane says, "Always awesome content watching uh, from the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad." Oh, cool stuff! Be safe out there, buddy. And then Moto Ham, I think this might be the last one. Uh, those classes will be fun. A guy did a 5K run, running gun in a pair. Oh, those glasses will be fun, not classes. A guy did a 5K running gun, had a pair, and the video was pretty cool. Oh, good stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. So if you join late, uh, catch the beginning. Uh, there will be an instant replay here. And I just want to plant the seed that let's use older technology from the 80s, 90s. Let's bridge the gap between online data sources and Let's try to make those available uh, uh, over radio. One last thing. I also plan to look at Reticulum, which is another, uh, it's an encrypted uh, platform for decentralized um, uh, data sharing. I, I haven't figured out what's the right way to bridge that with the work I'm doing, but that is coming. So I may add some mesh capabilities to everything I'm doing and attack, or attach Reticulum that way. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.